Hi guys, Jason from Children Photography here, and today I'm going to be talking about this and this. So what are they? They're macro flash rings. What's the difference? That's what I'm going to be talking to you about. This is an LED one. This is the Aperture Amaran AHL C60 Halo, and this is Holgon. I got this from a garage sale about a year ago for about twenty dollars. Got this new off eBay couple of months ago for about forty dollars. So we'll talk about the difference between an LED flash ring and what's this gas filled tube. It's it's the same thing that's in your flash. It's a, yeah it's just simply a tube with gas and it sends electricity through. Alright, so besides the fact that this has LEDs and this has the tube in it, the differences are so with the LED one will start. This has continuous light, you can see. So you can use it for video. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, you use it for video and stuff. And when you've got it on your camera and you half press the shutter button, it will turn on a guiding light so you can focus a lot easier in low light, which is great. As opposed to this, which is just going to send out one flash as opposed to a flash. They both have leads. They can both connect to your cable, like to your camera. This one has hot shoe mount on it. This one doesn't, but that doesn't matter. They've both got. They can both attach onto the front of your lens. I don't like to do it with macro shots. I prefer to have them on an angle, so you can look at it and you get some nice shadows and stuff. So. Let's talk about the sync speeds. They're both rated to one two hundredth of a second, which is great and fine because that's usually what your camera's going to sync to anyway, unless you get more expensive flashes and stuff. Difference being the LED one, because it's LEDs, it's not going to fire it as fast. Now this flash fires at around one fifty thousandth of a second, which is way faster than your camera's ever going to go, as opposed to this which isn't. So what's what's that mean? Simply, when you take a f shot with this, no, okay, so we'll start from the beginning. When you take a shot without going into too much detail, when you take a shot and the flash goes off, when you're adjusting for flash, the only two out of the three elements of, of exposure, the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, the shutter speed doesn't affect the flash, usually, a normal flash, normal flash. So the aperture and the ISO is what's going to help with your exposure because you're usually going to get a back, black background like this when you use a flash because you can kill out the ambient light. The LEDs, because they're LEDs, they're not going to fire nearly as fast as that. So if you shoot at 1 200th of a second or 1 100th of a second, you're going to get a brighter shot at 1 one hundredth because you're letting more light in, more of this light in because it's not firing so If I shoot with this at 1 one hundredth of a second or 1 two hundredth of a second or 1 fifth of a second I'm going to get the exact same exposure off this. The ambient light is going to be different so that's going to change it but overall this will be right. So what are the benefits? I can shoot at 1 two hundredth of a second with this no matter what which is great because I have a 135mm macro lens f2.8 and one two hundredth of a second is perfect to freeze the motion and everything. So if I'm hand holding, which I like to because you can get the angles, it's a bit easier than setting up a tripod around it. I can do it with this. With this, I've got to be a bit more careful, and it's going to be harder. I can't kill as much ambient light because I'm usually shooting at if I'm at a f f four or something, uh, four hundredth. I'm um, four hundred ISO. I'll usually be at like one one hundredth of a second to get enough light off this. So, that's that. That's sync speeds. Reload times. So with reload times, with the LEDs, because it's LEDs and it goes straight from the battery to that, it doesn't need to store energy or the capacitor and stuff, I can set my camera to continuous burst mode and it will continually fire. So my camera, the 550D, will shoot 3.7 frames a second or something like that. If I put it into continuous and I put this on, it will continue to flash the whole time, non-stop, until the battery dies. With this, it works a lot more like a normal flash. The battery 
puts the power into the capacitor, it stores that up and it shoots the flash. So at full full flash power, this will take two to three seconds to recycle and until I can get another flash. So that's fine when you're shooting something like flowers and nothing's moving and it's all static, so that's great. If I'm shooting something like a bee or an insect or a bug or something that's moving and I need to get that shot, this is going to recycle a lot faster. In three seconds a bee can come and go from a plant and get its pollen and go. But you get the extra power with that as opposed to this not being nearly as powerful. So there is a toss up between those. Next thing is price. Price is a huge part of it. This costs $40 on eBay. And the most expensive LED ones will cost up to about $60, $70 at the most usually. Now I got this really cheap, but if you get one new, you can get one from, they're around $300 up. I think the Canon one's in the five, $500 plus range, and you can just go up from there. So that is a lot more expensive. So if you're starting to experiment with macro, and you're not sure if you want to get into it, but you're an amateur and you want to have fun with it, this one's better. The LED is great because the focus assist is so much ha like so handy, especially when you're taking shots at dusk or dawn or something, and you want to get that shot but you can't really see because it's quite dark. This will help, and it will help the autofocus, whereas this won't. But this will make for much better shots, like period. No matter what, you will get better shots out of this. You can get the same type of shots, but there are some differences. All right. So I'll put an image up now. Now if you look at this first image, you can see it's the same angle, it's the same flower. I've got the exposures up there, so with the LED I've shot at f4, ISO 800 and 1 250th a second. Same lens and everything. And with the flash, these are, both, these are all JPEG images and they're all under for white balance flash with no touch ups at all, just so you can see but not to look at the shots, it's more to look at what you can do. And so you can see with the bottom one, F11, ISO 100, 1 200th of a second. 1 200th of a second means you're not going to get blurred. It's, it's going to be fast, it's going to get good. F11 is what I've done at the, the full power, which I've shot with both at full power. And that shows that you can shoot a greater depth of field. Now you go, F11 is huge, the field, depth of field in that. But with macros, you're going to, when you get that close to something with like a one-to-one -one macro, you're talking centimeters. So if you want to get a bit more in, if you want to fill the whole flower in, you're going to have to shoot at f11, f16 to get it. And at ISO 100, you're reducing noise and grain, and you're getting the most vibrant colors. So here's the next image. Now you can see in this one I was talking with the ambient light. Now with the LEDs, I've got the flashes set the same distance away. It's roughly the same shot. You can see with the LED one, at 800, you're losing a bit of that colour. It's not as nice, it's not as vibrant, and you can see that background really well. Like, it's blurred, but you can see there's green around the back. And F4, look at that depth of field, it is narrow. But you can do that with the other flash, you just knock the power down, that's simple. But you've got that quite bright green that's distracting and pulling away from the flower. Now you go down to the flash one down the bottom, F11, ISO 100, 1 200th of a second. You've got that nice dark background so it makes the flower pop. It brings out that colour a lot more. And because it's at one ISO 100, you don't have the grain or noise. And you've got more colour range in it. Okay, so let's look at the next shot. Now you can really see in this. I've got the flash a fair bit away. Like you can move it closer and the law of light, the inverse square law, will say it will get brighter, but you can only hold a flash so close to some objects. Now you can see where that F4 shot with the LED light at ISO 800, it was very hard because I took a couple of shots to get this because at 1 250th of a second you can still get that movement a bit around. But you're not getting the vibrance, you're not getting that contrast really, especially at 800 because you're losing a lot of it. Now, yes, you shoot in RAW and you can bring a bit back, but you don't want to have to process everything. The flash one has more vibrance, it has more punch, it has more contrast because of that. 
Okay, now the last image. I can really see what I was talking about with killing that ambient light. F4 is not going to kill that much ambient light. It's still going to let a lot in, and ISO 800 is going to keep a lot of that ambient light. This was shot just before sundown, so it was it was nice light. But if you really want to make the shot pop, you can kill that background off. As you can see in the flash, I've got a pure black background on that. That is purely because the flash was bright enough, bumped up to ISO 100, 1 200th of a second, F11, that kills out all the ambient light. This is pure flashlight on that bottom right. So, in total, this is great. The LED light is great for beginners, for people who want to try it, for amateurs, you don't want to spend too much on it. You can still get really nice shots, but if you want perfect, like, if you want really good macros, if you want to kill that background to make your image pop, you want that nice light quality, you got to fork out the money and get something good. You've got to get a proper macro flashlight. It doesn't matter if it's Canon or Sigma or like if it's your brand name or another brand name. You've got to get one with the proper macro flash tube in it, with the light tube in it with the gases and all that. And yes, it takes a couple seconds to reload it. The higher quality you get, the faster recycling time is. You can plug in like the power packs and it'll recycle even faster. But in total, I personally use this more. I've, I only just bought this and it's good and it's lighter and it's fast and easy and it's good, it's good for when you're shooting video. But if you want the proper thing, if you want the black background where the colours pop, where your subject's going to pop out, you've really got to use this. So, one more thing, one quick tip. I don't... You're going to get nice shots if you put it on the lens. If you put the lens through and you shoot through it, you get nice. Try taking it off. Take it off the lens. That's why it's got a cable. You can move it around, you can get some really nice angles on it, you can get some nice shadows around it, and it's worth a try. It's something good, you can get some creative stuff. You can get some lens flare if you want, if you point it partially into the camera. So, thanks for watching guys. I'm going to leave you with a couple of quick shots that I've taken with this, and with this, and hopefully you'll get out there, shoot some macros. Now you've got a bit more of an idea between the difference between the LED flashlight rings and the proper gas filled tube flashes. So thanks guys. Hi guys, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up to date on all the recent videos I put out. You can also like me on Facebook to keep up to date with all my photographs and tutorials and reviews and don't forget to check out the website for all the latest stuff, information, blogs and photos I put up. Thanks.